the human diplomat endured the Sele ambassador's condescension with gritted teeth, knowing that humanity's fate hinged on this first contact going well. Bruce Grant, a seasoned negotiator, stepped off the transport onto the sun-scorched landing pad of the sprawling intergalactic conference center on planet Zarox Prime. Orion, the Sele ambassador, towered over him, his sleek gray exoskeleton glinting. With a dismissive flick of antennae, Orion gestured for Bruce to follow, not offering to help with the luggage. I'm surprised your primitive species was even invited, Orion needled as they walked. I thought humans were too weak and undeveloped to matter. Bruce bit his tongue, determined to stay professional, but centuries of galactic condescension toward humanity seethed inside him. When humans first made contact, they were eager to join the stars. Yet time and again, older races like the Sile belittled them as naive upstarts. They ridiculed human tech and culture, exploiting their inexperience. But the galaxy would soon witness humanity's true strength. Unbeknownst to the arrogant Sile, humans had been quietly reverse-engineering the advanced tech they encountered, enhancing it and preparing. Humanity refused to remain doormats, and as tensions with the Sele reached a breaking point, a reckoning loomed that would rattle the galactic order to its core. Everything rode on this negotiation. One misstep, and the Sele would seize the excuse to subjugate or destroy Earth, but succeed, and humanity would seize its rightful place as equals. As Bruce entered the conference chamber, the future of his species rested in his hands. As Bruce and Orion seated themselves at the sleek conference table, an icy tension crackled between the two diplomats. Orion launched into his demands without preamble, his mandibles clicking with each point. The Sele Empire requires exclusive mining rights to your colonies in the Epsilon Eridani Tauketi and Glisa 581 systems. You will also provide us with an annual tribute of 100 million galactic credits as a show of gratitude for our protection. Bruce sat stone-faced, not a single muscle twitching in response to the outrageous terms. He let Orion finish, the Soleil's smug superiority radiating from his gleaming exoskeleton. Then, without a word, Bruce reached into his briefcase and withdrew a small device placing it on the table. With a soft beep, it activated, projecting a holographic star map that rotated lazily above the polished surface. The Korax system, Bruce said, zooming in on an unremarkable cluster of asteroids. Your species depends on it for selenium, the key component in your vaunted propulsion technology. Surprise flickered across Orion's features, his antennae twitching reflexively. He quickly smoothed his expression into one of disdain. So what? Korax is unclaimed. It belongs to no one. Di cold smile stretched across Bruce's face. Not anymore. As of this morning, Korax is under human control. We've established a military outpost on the largest asteroid and have already begun mining operations. Horian shot to his feet, his carapace flushing crimson with rage. Impossible. The Galactic Council will never recognize your claim. The narrator interjects. Orion couldn't have known then, but that move was just the opening salvo in a series of revelations that would upend the galactic order. Over the next few hours, Bruce systemically dismantled the Sele's smug superiority, laying bare the extent of humanity's covert advancements. We had not only reverse-engineered Sele technology, but improved upon it in ways they couldn't fathom. Advanced weaponry, unbreakable encryption, the ability to penetrate their planetary defense grids, Humanity had achieved it all, right under the condescending watch of the Sile. As Orion listened, his horror grew with each revelation. The balance of power was shifting before his very eyes, and there was nothing he could do to stop it. For centuries they had belittled us, dismissed us as primitives scrabbling in the galactic dirt, but no longer. With Bruce's words, humanity was claiming its place among the stars, and the galaxy would never be the same. As Bruce's words sank in, Orion's earlier bravado crumbled like a sandcastle before a tidal wave. He slumped back in his chair, his exoskeleton fading to a sickly grey. With trembling claws, he reached for the data pad, scanning the list of compromised agents with mounting horror. Impossible, 
he whispered. Our operatives are the finest in the galaxy. There's no way you could have... Bruce cut him off with a wave of his hand. But we did, and that's not all. He leaned forward, his eyes hard as flint. We also have detailed schematics of your newest warships, their capabilities, their weaknesses, even the access codes to your central military database. Orion's head snapped up, his mandibles quivering. You're bluffing. Am I? Bruce's smile held no warmth. With a single command, we could disable your entire fleet, cripple your defenses and leave your worlds vulnerable. Is that a risk you're willing to take? The narrator reflects on the gravity of this moment. It was a turning point, not just for the negotiations, but for the very course of galactic history. For centuries, humanity had endured the condescension and exploitation of the Soleil and other advanced races. But now, for the first time, we held the upper hand. We had the knowledge, the leverage, and the resolve to demand our rightful place among the stars. Bruce pushed another data pad across the table. But we are not conquerors, he said softly. We do not seek to dominate or destroy. We only want what is fair and just. Orion eyed the device warily. And what is that? A new beginning. Bruce tapped the screen, bringing up a dense wall of text. This is a draft of a new trade agreement between our species, one based on the principles of equality, reciprocity, and mutual benefit. No more exploitation, no more condescension. Just two races working together as partners. The narrator muses on the significance of this offer. It was a bold gambit, one that risked squandering the very advantage we had worked so hard to gain. But it was also a reflection of our deepest values. Even in our moment of triumph, we chose the path of diplomacy and cooperation. A path that offered our former adversaries a chance at redemption, and perhaps even friendship. Orion stared at the proposed agreement, his antennae twitching in agitation. The seconds stretched into minutes as he wrestled with the decision. Finally, he looked up at Bruce, a strange mix of emotions playing across his alien features. I... I will need to consult with my government, he said slowly. But this... this is not what I expected. Perhaps there is indeed a way forward for both our peoples. The narrator reflects. And so a new chapter began, a chapter in which humanity finally claimed its rightful place in the galactic community, not as conquerors or vassals, but as equals and partners. The road ahead would be long and fraught with challenges, as centuries of mistrust and resentment could not be erased overnight, but for the first time in our history we faced that future with hope and determination, secure in the knowledge that we had not compromised our fundamental decency in the pursuit of our destiny. Bruce's satisfaction was short-lived. No sooner had Orion left the conference room than an urgent communique from Earth Command flashed across Bruce's datapad screen. He scanned the message, his eyes widening in disbelief. The narrator cuts in. A Sele warship bristling with weapons had just entered the Korak system, heading straight for our fledgling mining outpost. It seemed some elements within the Sele military were not ready to accept humanity's new standing. To them, our bold move was a challenge to their authority, one they were determined to crush. Bruce's fingers flew over the keypad, hailing Orion. The Sele ambassador's face filled the viewscreen, his expression guarded. Ambassador, are you aware your military has just dispatched a warship to Korax? Bruce demanded. Orion's antennae twitched. I have no knowledge of such actions. It's possible this is the work of a rogue faction, one that opposes our negotiations. Bruce leaned forward, his eyes hard. Rogue or not, if that ship attacks our outpost, we will defend ourselves. I strongly urge you to recall it now. I will do what I can, Orion replied, his voice strained. But I fear this situation may soon be beyond my control. The screen went blank. Bruce clenched his fists, the plastic of the data pad creaking under his grip. The narrator reflects, in that tense moment it seemed all our hard-won progress teetered on the brink of collapse, but even in the face of this provocation, we refused to back down. Too much was at stake. Another message blinked onto Bruce's screen. The miners had been evacuated, the outpost's defences primed to engage the approaching warship. 
Bruce's finger hovered over the button that would initiate the counterattack, his breath caught in his throat. The decision made in the next few minutes would shape the course of galactic history, the narrator intones. Would we meet force with force, risking an all-out war? Or was there another path, one of reason and diplomacy, even in the face of aggression? Seconds ticked by, each one an eternity. Bruce's finger trembled above the button a hair's breadth from contact. Suddenly, Orion's voice crackled over the comm. Wait, the warship is standing down, I repeat. The warship is withdrawing. The narrator exhales, a mix of relief and grim satisfaction. Disaster had been averted, but only just. Our resolve had been tested, and we had not been found wanting. To the galaxy, we had sent an unmistakable message. Humanity would defend its interests and ideals, but violence was always our last resort. As the Soleil ship retreated, Bruce slumped back in his chair, adrenaline still surging through his veins. This was only the beginning, he knew. More challenges lay ahead. But for now, humanity could savour this victory. In the wake of the Korax crisis, Orion and his Sile delegation descended upon Earth, their sleek spacecraft gliding through the atmosphere to alight on the landing pad of the United Nations headquarters in New York. Bruce stood at the edge of the tarmac, a welcoming party arrayed behind him. As the Sile disembarked, he stepped forward, extending a hand to Orion. The ambassador grasped it firmly, his exoskeleton cool and smooth against Bruce's skin. "'Welcome to Earth,' Bruce said, his voice carrying across the windswept platform. "'We have much to discuss.' The narrator reflects, it was a moment that would have been unthinkable just weeks before, a human and a Sile standing side by side, ready to forge a new future for their species. But the events of Korax had changed everything. We had glimpsed the precipice of war and had stepped back from the brink. Now the real work began. Over the next days and weeks, the negotiations unfolded in the halls and chambers of the UN. Bruce and his team worked tirelessly, poring over every clause and provision of the proposed agreement. They fought for humanity's interests with a tenacity that surprised even the Sele, refusing to yield on matters of sovereignty and security. Orion, for his part, proved a formidable negotiator. He countered every human proposal with one of his own, seeking to maximize Soleil advantages at every turn. But as the talks wore on, a grudging respect began to grow between the two sides. The narrator describes the atmosphere. It was a delicate balancing act, a high-wire dance above a chasm of mistrust and resentment. One misstep, one careless word, could send the whole process tumbling down. But slowly... Painfully, progress was made. Just as a deal seemed within reach, however, a new crisis erupted. A series of explosions rocked Sele enclaves across Earth, the work of human extremists determined to sabotage the peace process. Bruce watched in horror as the death toll mounted, Sele bodies pulled from the rubble of shattered buildings. Zorion was livid, his carapace flushed crimson with rage, he stormed into Bruce's office, slamming his claws on the desk. Bruce met his gaze unflinchingly. This is not our doing, he said firmly, and we will find those responsible. The narrator muses, It was a critical moment, a test of the fragile trust we had built. The old Bruce might have responded with threats and bluster, but the man who now sat across from Orion was different. He understood that the only way forward was together, in the days that followed, an unlikely alliance formed. Human and Soleil investigators worked side by side, pooling their resources and expertise to hunt down the terrorists. Bruce and Orion led the charge, their once adversarial relationship transformed into a partnership, forged in the crucible of crisis. The narrator reflects, It was a strange sight, to be sure, a human and a Soleil working together as equals, but as the investigation progressed, as the evidence mounted, something even stranger began to happen. We began to see each other not as aliens, but as allies, as friends. The breakthrough came in a raid on a remote compound in the Andes. There, in a fortified bunker deep beneath the earth, Bruce and Orion found the proof they had been seeking. The terrorists had been funded and equipped by none other 
than a cabal of Sele hardliners, rogue elements within the government determined to plunge the galaxy into war. The narrator sets the scene. It was a moment of truth, a crossroads in the history of two species. The evidence was damning, the implications staggering. Would the Sele government acknowledge its complicity, or would it close ranks and protect its own? In a tense standoff, Bruce and Orion confronted the Sele Prime Minister with their findings. For a long moment, the fate of billions hung in the balance. Then, with a weary sigh, the Prime Minister made his choice. The rogue faction was expelled from the government, its leaders arrested and put on trial for treason. The Sele recommitted themselves to the peace process, pledging full cooperation with the humans in rooting out the remnants of the terrorist network. The narrator describes the aftermath. It was a stunning victory, a triumph of justice and diplomacy over the forces of hatred and division. Humanity and the Sele had faced the abyss together and had emerged stronger for it. The galaxy would never be the same. In a joint press conference, Bruce and Orion stood side by side, their faces weary but proud. They spoke of a new era of cooperation, of a future in which humans and Sile would work together as partners and friends. The narrator reflects, it was a moment that had been centuries in the making, a dream that had seemed impossible just a few short years before. But, as I looked out at the sea of faces, human and Sile alike, I knew that we had finally turned a corner. The road ahead would be long and hard, but we would walk it together, and together there was nothing we could not achieve. As the ink dried on the historic trade and security agreement, a new dawn broke over the galactic horizon. Humanity and the Sele, once locked in a bitter struggle for dominance, now stood side by side as partners and allies. The narrator reflects on the spirit of the times. It was an era of unprecedented cooperation and discovery. Joint scientific expeditions, crewed by the best and brightest of both species, ventured into uncharted regions of the cosmos, pushing back the boundaries of the known and the possible. At the same time, cultural exchange programs flourished, fostering a deeper understanding and appreciation between our two peoples. Bruce and Orion, the architects of this new alliance, threw themselves into their work with renewed vigor. They shuttled back and forth between Earth and the Sile homeworld, lobbying their respective governments for increased funding and support. The potential benefits of the partnership were staggering, Bruce argued passionately before a joint session of Congress. By combining our strengths and resources, we can achieve breakthroughs in science, technology and medicine that would be impossible on our own. Orion echoed these sentiments in his own addresses to the Sele Assembly. Humanity is not our enemy, he declared, his voice ringing through the vaulted chamber. They are our partners, our friends, and together we can build a future brighter than either of us could imagine. The narrator captures the mood of optimism. It was a heady time filled with promise and possibility. Everywhere one looked, there were signs of progress and cooperation. Human and Sele engineers worked side by side to design new starships, while our artists and musicians blended their traditions to create new forms of expression. It seemed that the old barriers that had divided us for so long were finally crumbling, and a new era of peace and prosperity was at hand. But even as the Alliance flourished, storm clouds were gathering on the horizon. Not everyone, it seemed, was happy with the new status quo. Zoran, a charismatic and influential Sile politician, began to speak out against the partnership, his words dripping with xenophobia and fear. We are losing our identity, he warned his followers at a rally in the capital city. We are becoming dependent on human technology and resources, sacrificing our own traditions and values in the process. The narrator sets the stage for conflict. Zoran and his supporters, while a minority, were vocal and passionate in their opposition. They staged protests and demonstrations, demanding that the Sele government withdraw from the agreement and reassert its sovereignty. They played on the fears and prejudices of those who still harbored resentment towards humanity, stoking the flames of nationalism and distrust. As tensions rose, Bruce and Orion found themselves on the front lines of a new kind of battle. 
they organized public forums and media appearances, working tirelessly to counter Zoran's propaganda and promote the benefits of the Alliance. His arguments are based on lies and misinformation, Bruce said in a heated debate with Zoran on a popular Soleil news program. The partnership has brought enormous benefits to both our peoples, and to turn our backs on it now would be a tragedy. But Zoran was unmoved. You speak of benefits, but what of the costs, he retorted, his eyes flashing with anger. Our young people are forgetting our ways, our traditions. They are being seduced by the glamour of human culture, losing touch with what makes us Sile. The narrator reflects on the challenges faced. It was an uphill battle, one that would test the resolve and determination of even the most committed advocates of the Alliance. Zoran and his followers were well-funded and well-organized, with deep roots in Sele society. They knew how to push the right buttons, how to exploit the fears and anxieties of those who felt left behind by the rapid pace of change. The situation reached a boiling point when Zoran and his supporters made a bold and dangerous move. In a lightning raid, they seized control of a major Sele military base, declaring themselves the legitimate government of the Sele people. All Sele forces are hereby ordered to withdraw from joint operations with the humans, Zoran declared in a broadcast from the captured base. All human personnel are to leave Sele territory immediately. We will no longer be bound by the terms of this disastrous agreement. The narrator captures the shock and uncertainty. The news of the coup sent shockwaves throughout the galaxy. The fragile peace that had been built between humanity and the Sele now hung by a thread, threatened by the actions of a small but determined group of extremists. Would the Alliance survive this crisis, or would it be torn apart by the forces of fear and hatred? The fate of two species, and perhaps the entire galaxy, hung in the balance as Bruce and Orion raced to find a solution. The narrator recounts the dramatic events that followed. The response from the Sele government was swift and decisive. Within hours of Zoran's declaration, a state of emergency was declared, and loyalist forces were mobilized to retake the captured base. Bruce and Orion, recognizing the gravity of the situation, wasted no time in rallying their own teams to support the operation. Human Special Forces units, armed with cutting-edge weaponry and tactical gear, were swiftly deployed alongside their Sele counterparts. Together, they formed a formidable force, united in their determination to bring the crisis to a swift and decisive end. The battle that ensued was fierce and bloody, a testament to the fanatical determination of Zoran and his followers. Though outnumbered and outgunned, they fought with a ferocity that belied their desperate situation, willing to lay down their lives for their cause. The Loyalist forces, however, displayed remarkable discipline and restraint in the face of this onslaught. Guided by Bruce and Orion's steady leadership, they advanced methodically, seeking to minimize casualties on both sides and bring the conflict to a speedy resolution. As the fighting raged on, a new and terrifying development emerged. Intelligence reports indicated that Zoran had rigged the base with a series of explosive devices strategically placed to inflict maximum damage and loss of life. If his demands were not met, he threatened, he would detonate the bombs, turning the base into a smouldering ruin. Bruce and Orion, faced with this chilling ultimatum, knew they had to act fast. While the battle continued to rage around them, they coordinated with specialized bomb disposal units, racing against the clock to locate and disarm the deadly devices. At the same time, they opened lines of communication with Zoran, hoping to negotiate a peaceful surrender and avert further bloodshed. The narrator describes the intensity of these parallel efforts. It was a high-stakes game of cat and mouse, with the fate of countless lives hanging in the balance. Bruce and Orion, drawing on all their skills and experience, worked tirelessly to defuse the situation, knowing that one false move could spell disaster for everyone involved. In a daring raid, a joint team of human and Sele special forces finally managed to breach Zoran's command center. In a swift and decisive action, they apprehended the rebel leader and his top lieutenants, effectively cutting the head off the snake. Simultaneously, 
the bomb disposal teams reported success in neutralizing the explosive devices, eliminating the threat of catastrophic destruction. The narrator reflects on the significance of this victory. It was a stunning achievement, one that demonstrated the strength and resilience of the human Sile alliance. In the face of a grave threat, the two species had come together and worked as one, putting aside their differences and focusing on their common goals. It was a powerful reminder of what could be accomplished through unity and cooperation. Yet even as the immediate crisis was resolved, Bruce and Orion knew that the deeper issues that had fueled Zoran's rebellion remained. In the days that followed, it became clear that his movement, while extreme, had tapped into a well of discontent and alienation that ran deep within Sele society. Many Sele, particularly those on the fringes, felt left behind by the rapid changes brought about by the Alliance, their traditional ways of life threatened by the influx of new technologies and ideas. Healing these wounds, Bruce and Orion realized, would require more than just military might. And so, even as the dust settled on the battlefield, the two leaders launched a series of public outreach campaigns aimed at addressing the grievances and concerns of those who felt marginalized and forgotten. It was the beginning of a long and difficult process, one that would test their diplomatic skills to the limit. The narrator reflects on the challenges ahead. It was a daunting task, one that would require patience, empathy, and a willingness to listen to those who had been pushed to the margins. But Bruce and Orion, drawing on the lessons they had learned throughout their long and difficult journey, were determined to see it through. They knew that the future of the Alliance, and indeed the future of both their species, depended on their ability to build bridges and find common ground, even in the face of adversity. As the rebuilding began and the first tentative steps towards reconciliation were taken, the narrator muses on the larger significance of the crisis. It was a turning point, a moment of truth that had tested the very foundations of the human Sele partnership, but in the end, the two species had emerged stronger and more united than ever before. They had shown that they could overcome even the most daunting of challenges, as long as they stood together and remained true to their shared values and ideals. The road ahead would be long and difficult, but with the worst of the crisis behind them, Bruce and Orion could face the future with renewed hope and determination. As Bruce and Orion threw themselves into the hard work of reform and reconciliation in the wake of Zoran's failed coup, their efforts began to bear fruit. The joint commission they established to root out corruption within the Sele government wasted no time in launching a series of high-profile investigations, bringing charges against dozens of officials who had abused their positions for personal gain. The narrator describes the impact of these actions. It was a powerful signal to the Sele people that the days of impunity were over, that no one, no matter how powerful or well-connected, was above the law. For the first time in generations, there was a sense of hope and optimism, a belief that real change was possible. At the same time, Bruce and Orion's economic development initiatives began to take hold, bringing new investment and job opportunities to long-neglected regions of Sile space. Human corporations, eager to tap into the vast resources and markets of the Sile Empire, poured billions of credits into joint ventures and infrastructure projects, working hand-in-hand -hand with their Sile counterparts. The narrator reflects on the transformative power of these efforts. It was a remarkable sight to see human and Sele workers toiling side by side, building the foundations of a shared future. The old barriers of mistrust and prejudice were slowly but surely being broken down, replaced by a growing sense of common purpose and destiny. The narrator describes the formation of the GSA. It was an unprecedented undertaking, one that required an enormous amount of coordination and cooperation between the human and Sele militaries. But Bruce and Orion were determined to see it through, knowing that the very survival of their peoples depended on their ability to stand together against those who would seek to divide and conquer them. As the first GSA ships began to patrol the spaceways, their gleaming hulls emblazoned with the insignia of the Alliance, there was a palpable sense of pride and purpose among the crews. Human and Sele officers worked side by side on the bridges, while mixed teams of marines and ground troops trained together in the hangars and cargo bays. 
the narrator captures the spirit of camaraderie and shared purpose. It was a powerful symbol of what the Alliance could achieve when it worked together towards a common goal. The GSA, with its integrated command structure and shared resources, was a model of cooperation and collaboration, a shining example of what was possible when two species put aside their differences and focused on what united them. But even as the GSA began to make its presence felt across the galaxy, troubling reports began to reach Bruce and Orion's ears. A new player had entered the game, a mysterious and powerful race known as the Zorgans, who seemed to view the growing strength of the human Sile alliance with alarm and hostility. The narrator introduces this new threat. Little was known about the Zorgans, save that they were an ancient and technologically advanced species with a reputation for ruthlessness and a hunger for conquest. They had watched from the shadows as humanity and the Sile had forged their alliance, biding their time and gathering their strength. Now, it seemed, they were ready to make their move. As Bruce and Orion pored over the intelligence reports, a disturbing picture began to emerge. The Zorgons, it appeared, had been secretly funneling weapons and resources to Zoran and his followers, using them as pawns to destabilize the Alliance from within. The narrator describes the sense of betrayal and anger that Bruce and Orion felt. It was a devastating blow, one that cast the recent crisis in a whole new light. Zoran and his movement, it seemed, had never been truly independent, but had instead been manipulated and controlled by the Zorgans for their own sinister purposes. The true enemy, Bruce and Orion realized, had been hiding in plain sight all along. As the GSA mobilized to confront this new threat, Bruce and Orion knew that they were facing a challenge unlike any they had faced before. The Zorgons were a formidable foe, with technology and resources that dwarfed anything the Alliance could muster. But they also knew that they had no choice but to stand and fight to defend the hard-won peace and prosperity that they had built together. The narrator sets the stage for the battles to come. It would be a long and difficult struggle, one that would test the strength and resilience of the Alliance like never before. But Bruce and Orion were ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead, secure in the knowledge that they had each other, and the combined might of their peoples at their backs. Together they would stand against the darkness and fight for the future they had dreamed of building. As the evidence of Zorgan involvement in the recent crisis became clear, Bruce and Orion sprang into action. They convened emergency meetings with the leaders of both the human and Sele governments, presenting their findings with grim urgency. In the halls of power on Earth and the Sele homeworld, Bruce and Orion made their case, they displayed intercepted communications, surveillance footage, and decoded intelligence reports, all pointing to the same chilling conclusion. The Zorgans, far from being a distant threat, were actively working to destabilize the human Sele alliance. This is no longer a matter of speculation or conjecture, Bruce said, his voice ringing with conviction. The Zorgans are here, and they are coming for us. We must act now, before it's too late. Orion, standing shoulder to shoulder with his human counterpart, echoed these sentiments. The peace we have worked so hard to build is under attack, he declared. We cannot sit idly by while the Zorgans seek to tear it down. The narrator reflects on the gravity of the moment. It was a call to arms, a rallying cry that echoed across the stars. The human Sele alliance, forged in the crucible of shared struggle and sacrifice, now faced its greatest test. The Zorgans, with their advanced technology and ruthless ambition, posed an existential threat to everything they had built. Only by standing together, by marshalling every resource and every ally, could they hope to prevail. The response was swift and decisive. The governments of Earth and the Sile homeworld, recognizing the severity of the threat, authorized a massive mobilization of their military forces. The GSA, once a symbol of cooperation and unity, now became the tip of the spear in a desperate war for survival. In a daring series of raids, GSA strike teams targeted key Zorgan military installations and supply lines, seeking to disrupt their ability to wage war and support their proxy forces. Human and Sile ships, working in perfect coordination, struck deep behind enemy lines, destroying weapons factories, fuel depots and communication hubs. At the same time, 
Bruce and Orion worked tirelessly to forge new alliances with other alien races who had suffered under the Zorgon yoke. The Krill, the Valtarians, the Zephyrians. One by one, they joined the growing coalition, united by a common cause and a shared determination to resist Zorgon aggression. The narrator captures the intensity of the moment. It was a desperate gamble, a race against time to stop the Zorgons before they could unleash their full might. The GSA, outnumbered and outgunned, fought with bravery and determination, knowing that the fate of countless worlds hung in the balance. Bruce and Orion, meanwhile, worked tirelessly to build support and solidarity among the Allied races, knowing that only through unity and cooperation could they hope to prevail. But even as the Alliance grew in strength and resolve, the Zorgons revealed the true extent of their power. In a shocking display of technological might, they unleashed a fleet of gigantic robotic warriors, each the size of a small moon. Armed with planet-destroying lasers and shielded by impenetrable force fields, these monstrous machines tore through the Allied defenses like tissue paper. The GSA, caught off guard by this devastating new weapon, suffered catastrophic losses in the initial battles. Entire fleets were wiped out in a matter of hours, their crews incinerated by the robot's relentless onslaught. Planets that had stood for centuries were reduced to smouldering ruin, their populations slaughtered or enslaved. The narrator describes the despair that gripped the Alliance. It was the darkest hour, a moment when all seemed lost. The Zorgons, with their seemingly invincible robot warriors, appeared poised to sweep across the galaxy, crushing all resistance in their path. Even Bruce and Orion, who had faced so many challenges and overcome so many obstacles, began to wonder if this was a fight they could win. But even in the depths of despair, the two leaders refused to give up hope. In a last desperate gamble, they devised a plan to strike at the heart of the Zorgon war machine. If they could infiltrate the Zorgon homeworld and sabotage the central control system for the robot warriors, they might still have a chance to turn the tide. Bruce and Orion assembled a team of their most skilled and daring operatives, drawn from the ranks of both the human and Seelay militaries. These were the best of the best, warriors and technicians who had proven their mettle on a hundred battlefields. The narrator sets the stage for the ultimate test. It was a mission like no other, a daring raid that would require every ounce of courage and ingenuity they possessed. Bruce and Orion, leading the charge, knew that they were risking everything on this one last roll of the dice, but they also knew that the alternative was unthinkable. A galaxy plunged into an age of darkness and despair, ruled by the iron fist of the Zorgons. Against all odds, the team managed to penetrate the formidable defences of the Zorgon homeworld. They slipped past sensor arrays, evaded patrols, and fought their way through the most heavily guarded installation in the galaxy. In a fierce battle against Zorgon guards and automated security systems, they finally reached the central control nexus. Working frantically, the saboteurs planted a series of explosive charges around the Nexus, each one carefully calibrated to inflict maximum damage on the delicate control systems. As alarms blared and reinforcements closed in, they fought a desperate rearguard action, buying precious seconds for the charges to detonate. The narrator describes the moment of truth, and then with a blinding flash and a roar that shook the very foundations of the planet, the charges went off. In an instant, the central control system was reduced to molten slag, the robot warriors frozen in place like so many lifeless statues. Across the galaxy, a ragged cheer went up from the Allied forces as they realized what had happened. Against all odds, the impossible mission had succeeded. The Zorgon's most fearsome weapon had been neutralized and with it their aura of invincibility. The tide of the war had turned and victory once an impossible dream, now seemed within reach at last. The narrator picks up the story in the aftermath of the Alliance team's daring sabotage of the Zorgon robot control system. With the Zorgon's most fearsome weapon neutralized, the tide of the war shifted rapidly. The GSA, seizing the opportunity, launched a blistering counter-offensive, striking deep into Zorgon-held territory. Alliance ships, Human and Sele, side by side, tore through the enemy defences. Zorgon vessels, 
once an unstoppable juggernaut, crumpled under the onslaught, their hull plates shredding like foil. On the ground, Alliance troops stormed Zorgan strongholds, their weapons spitting plasma fire as they advanced relentlessly. The Zorgans, reeling from the loss of their robotic warriors, fell back in disarray. System by system, world by world, they were driven back towards their home system, leaving a trail of shattered ships and broken dreams in their wake. Bruce and Orion, leading from the front as always, pushed their forces onward, heedless of the cost. They knew that this was their chance to end the war once and for all, to crush the Zorgan threat and secure the future of the galaxy. The narrator describes the climactic battle, and so in the skies above the Zorgon homeworld the final clash began. The Alliance fleet, a motley assemblage of battered but unbowed ships, hurled itself against the last remnants of the Zorgon armada with a fury born of desperation and determination. Beams of incandescent energy crisscrossed the void, searing through shields and hull alike. Torpedoes and missiles streaked through the darkness, their warheads detonating in suns of nuclear fire. And in the midst of it all, the ships and crews of the Alliance fought with a courage that would echo through the ages. The Zorgans, their backs to the wall, fought with the savagery of cornered beasts. Their ships, though outnumbered and outgunned, charged into the teeth of the Alliance fire, their weapons blazing until the very end. They knew that defeat here would mean the end of their empire, the shattering of their dreams of conquest and domination. But in the end, it was not enough. The Alliance, battered and bloodied but unbroken, smashed through the final Zorgon defences and unleashed a storm of fire upon the planet below. The Zorgon capital, a vast metropolis of towering spires and sprawling factories, vanished in a blinding flash of light, reduced to molten slag by the fury of the Alliance assault. The narrator reflects on the cost of victory. It was over. The Zorgan threat, the nightmare that had haunted the galaxy for so long, was ended at last. But the price had been high, higher than anyone had dared to imagine. Countless ships lay shattered and broken, drifting in the silent void. Tens of thousands of lives had been lost, human and Sele and Zorgan alike, their blood mingling in the cold vacuum of space. And Bruce and Orion, the architects of this triumph, lay broken and bleeding on the decks of their shattered flagships, their bodies ravaged by the wounds they had sustained in the final battle. But even in the midst of this devastation, there was a sense of hope, a feeling that a new chapter was beginning. The alliance had been forged in the crucible of war, tempered by shared sacrifice and suffering. And though the road ahead would be long and hard, there was a sense that together they could face whatever challenges lay ahead. As the smoke of battle cleared, and the process of rebuilding began, however, new dangers emerged. The Zorgans, though defeated, were not destroyed. Rival factions, each claiming to be the legitimate successor to the shattered empire, began to vie for power and influence, carving out fiefdoms among the ruins. The narrator describes the new challenges. It was a time of chaos and uncertainty, a time when the old order had been swept away and a new one had yet to take its place. The Alliance, exhausted by the long years of war, found itself struggling to maintain order and stability in the face of a galaxy turned upside down. Other races, long resentful of Zorgan domination, began to test the limits of the Alliance's power, probing for weaknesses and opportunities. Pirates and warlords, scenting blood in the water, began to raid and pillage with impunity, taking advantage of the vacuum left by the Zorgans' fall. And Bruce and Orion, their once unbreakable bond strained to the breaking point by the weight of their responsibilities and the scars of the war, found themselves struggling to hold the Alliance together. They had to find new reserves of strength and determination, had to dig deep within themselves to find the will to carry on. The narrator reflects on the changed galaxy. The war had changed everything. The old certainties, the ancient assumptions that had guided the galaxy for millennia had been swept away in the maelstrom of conflict. In their place, a new order was struggling to be born, an order founded on the alliance and the fragile bonds of trust and cooperation that had been forged in the fires of war. But even in the midst of this turmoil, 
There were those who held fast to the ideals that had brought the Alliance together. There were those who believed that a better future was possible, that the sacrifices of the war had not been in vain. And so as the galaxy struggled to find its way in the aftermath of the great conflict, the torch was passed to a new generation, a generation that had grown up in the shadow of war, that had seen the horrors and the triumphs of the great struggle against the Zorgons, a generation that was determined to build a better future, to make the dream of a united galaxy a reality. As Bruce and Orion, their hair grey and their faces lined with the weight of years, looked out upon the stars they had fought so hard to defend, they knew that their work was not yet done. They knew that the galaxy was still a dangerous and uncertain place, that there would always be new threats to face and new challenges to overcome. The narrator speaks of legacy, but they also knew that they had laid the foundation for something greater, something that would endure long after they were gone. They had forged an alliance that had stood against the darkness, that had proven that unity and cooperation were stronger than division and strife. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.